No, no, you could never. <laughs> you monster! What have you done? I want you to listen to me real carefully, D Mac. I'm doing this for your own f***ing good. What the f*** are you talking about, Uncle Tommy? At the center of episode 5 was the exploration of family love, tragedy, and betrayal. In regards to Tommy and his family, he was determined to rewrite the narrative, to do right by his nephew D-Mac, and shield him from the path that once consumed Tariq St. Patrick in power. He had to use tough love and be stern, but caring, which is what made the decision to send D-Mac to a youth academy a difficult one. He did so in the hopes to protect him from the dangers of the street life, and this tough love just reflects his commitment to providing D-Mac with an escape route. Now the problem with this is, Ghost tried to do this with Tariq by sending him to Choate. They thought by sending him away would keep him away from the life he got sucked into in New York. But he found himself missing classes, moving pills, and being played by Effie and then later suspended. So as the narrative unfolds, we're left wondering whether DMAC will go down the same road, and whether the gravitational pull of the street life is just too simply powerful to resist. Will he eventually come back to Chicago and ask his Uncle Tommy to teach him the game? What do you want from the boy? Teach me your motherfucking game, ghost. Now, post 205, the director of the episode, Lisa Demain, did do an interview where she gave her thoughts on the events that unfolded. I went through her thoughts on the Flynn situation in this video, but this is what she had to say about the family dynamics between D-Mac, Tommy, Kate, and JP. He cares about D-Mac more than he can care for Kate. Kate's a wound that's really hard for him. She abandoned him and he's tolerating her right now. He did so with some kindness in episode 3 when he helped her. She bought in the ice cream and helped her upstairs to go to bed and then tucked her in. But I think D-Mac is the glue. If everybody loves D-Mac, then everybody can be together. There's that moment where Tommy has D-Mac kidnapped and they're dropping D-Mac off to the farm. When he's on the phone to D-Mac, he's like, I'm watching you, don't try and get away. I have eyes everywhere and he almost tells D-Mac that he loves him, but he stops himself. You see Tommy being vulnerable for a moment. He longs to have family, but the world he is setting up, I don't know how he's going to do that without jeopardizing their safety. Now, with that being said, many of you guys will remember how I made reference to Tommy longing for family. The fact that he had none growing up when he was younger, he attached himself to anybody who gave him a sense of belonging. Tommy's always looking for somebody to take care of. Yeah, job. So Lisa Demain's quotes post episode 205 just adds a lot more context to Tommy's love for his family and also why he has such a close bond with Ghost. But something we hadn't spoken about was the fact DMAC was the glue that was keeping everybody together. As we established Tommy's love for family, he also feels as if he has a second chance to do right by his nephew, something which he couldn't do with his nephew back in New York. For JP, he's got a shot at making it work with his son that he lost to the streets. Now for Kate Egan, DMAC was a strength and motivation to keep fighting on and living a sober life. No, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm done with that shit. Take the bag. Tommy. What is wrong with you? Tommy, I'm not kidding. I'm saying clean. I'm Keep done. The... Kay changed her ways when she came to Chicago, and that's because she found out she had a grandson she never knew she had. It really changed the game for Kay in a big way. She was 10 days sober. She went to AA meetings, which is a really big step for someone like Kay Egan. For her entire life, she had a toxic relationship with her son. She left her other one in Chicago and maybe taken in ghosts to kind of fill the void left by JP. But she was also consumed by a lifetime addiction. Now the fact that she recognized she was a bad mother, this was a big step in the right direction and huge character development. She tried to make an amends with Tommy and JP by apologizing, which is something she's never done before. And you could tell she was really struggling to kind of apologize. She was coming out of this huge fog because for the first time in her life, she was able to think clearly. And when you kind of think about it, it's actually because of DMAC. Just like Lisa Demain, the director said, DMAC was the glue. And in my opinion, she was the only one that was keeping Kate from the drug she used to depend on. Now in my breakdown, I also mentioned how D-Mac was Kate's strength. He was her motivation. She saw an opportunity in D-Mac to do right by him, something which she knows she failed to do with JP and Tommy when they were his age. Unfortunately, D-Mac defying his uncle Tommy's orders to stay indoors and stay out of trouble ended really badly for Kate and D-Mac. For D-Mac, he was sent to a farm in the middle of nowhere. As you could see, there was only fields, horses and cows, a completely different life to which D-Mac has grown up in in Chicago. Now, will we see what DMAC gets up to at the youth academy like we saw Tariq at Choate? Hopefully, that's something I really wish they do explore in a bit more detail. We saw how Tariq slowly started to rebel against his father's wishes, and the time he spent in Choate was a learning curve. It's where he started to sell pills, but also his first lesson in betrayal thanks to Effie. So if DMAC is here for a prolonged period of time, which I personally don't think he will, I think he'll end up finding his way back to Chicago, but if he is, then I hope they do explore different ways to help his character grow. 
as I mentioned before, I think he's just destined to come back to Chicago. There is just no way D-Max stays here long term or until Tommy says so. It's just what does Tommy do with him after? Will he reluctantly have to accept this is who he is and maybe even teach him the street game? Something Ghost refused to do with Tariq St. Patrick. I always wondered, you know, what if Ghost did teach Tariq the game? How would he have developed? How would he have been in a business sense in the real world, learning from the mistakes of his father, from the man himself, both in the street and in the real world? So it really will be interesting to see if Tommy does take D-Mac on board and mentor him in the streets, which I think is the only way. There is no way D-Mac stays at the Youth Academy in the long run. For me, his destiny is the streets. Now, on the other side of this story and D-Mac being the glue that keeps his family together, did JP and Tommy make the right decision in not telling Kay what they really did with her new favourite? He ain't coming back. You, you, you don't... You know, no, you could never... <laughs> the reason why Tommy didn't want to tell Kay is because he knows what she's like. She could in essence completely mess everything up trying to go find D-Mac and bringing him back home to the dangerous streets of Chicago. But the problem with what JP did and Tommy did was, they made it look like they got rid of D-Mac, they made it sound as if they potentially could have killed him, and Kate knows her son. She knows what he's done in the past and what he's capable of. This look said it all, and she honestly had that fear in her eyes of what he could do next, especially if she doesn't do as she's told, and she knows what happened to Tony Teresi. Now not only did this push Kate over the edge where she then turned to the drug so she used to depend on, could this also be the catalyst that sends her back to New York? I think we have to ask ourselves, what does Kate have left in Chicago if she doesn't have D-Mac? As Lisa Demain said, he was the glue that was keeping this family together. And so if D-Mac isn't there, then this family crumbles. Of course, she still has JP and Tommy, but we're seeing how difficult it is for them to reconnect because of years of neglect, bad behavior, and relationships that were pretty toxic and non-existent. With her and D-Mac is slightly different. You saw her asking him about a girl when she saw the twinkle in his eyes. And this is what she missed with Tommy and JP. She's got a chance to build a fresh new relationship with D-Mac and learn from her past mistakes. So what's next for Kate now that she no longer has D-Mac? Now I can actually understand why many would think she would OD on her own supply, but I don't think that's the case. And the timeline pretty much gives us a clue to suggest Kate will survive until season 3 of Force at least. We saw her return at the end of Go season 3, which is ahead of the Force timeline at this moment in time. So Kate isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Although with no D-Mac in Chicago, what's left for her? Could she potentially go back to New York, which is where she crossed paths with Tariq St. Patrick at the end of Go Season 3? Will D-Mac return to Chicago and continue to give Kate that strength to fight on? Will he stay at the Youth Academy or end up back in the streets? There are so many different directions they can take this particular story in. So despite the parallels to power, there really does remain an air of mystery and unpredictability, which I think is a really great place for Force to be in. So with that being said, drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section because I am intrigued to see where you guys see this story heading for Kate, Tommy and D-Mac. In my opinion, I would love for them to come face to face and for D-Mac to ask his uncle Tommy to teach him the game. And where Tommy reluctantly accepts the fact he's gonna have to, the complete opposite to Ghost and Tariq. But with that, he's also jeopardizing his family because he knows there are only two outcomes when you go down the gangster route. It's either death or jail. 